And thank you, Aaron. Now, the Office for National Statistics is being criticised for significantly overestimating the number of trans people in England and Wales. According to the findings of the 2021 census, there were 262,000 transgender people living in England and Wales, which would be an equivalent of 0.5% of the population. But just how credible is this estimation? Well, joining me now to discuss this is the executive editor of Sex Matters, a human rights organisation that campaigns for clarity on sex in law and everyday life. Welcome to the show, Mayor Forstato. Thanks for joining us on the show. Always a pleasure. So, can you talk us through um, how we got to this figure of 262,000, but actually it seems to be massively overestimating the numbers. What's going on? It does. Well, this is the first time the census is done every 10 years, and this is the first time this question's been asked. And the way that the ONS decided to ask the question was they didn't ask, are you trans? They asked everybody over the age of 16, is the gender you identify the same as the sex that, you, that was recorded at birth, um, your sex recorded at birth? It's quite a difficult question to understand. and. Um, 262,000 people said no, their sex, that the gender they identify is not the same as their sex recorded at birth. And the question is, how many of those people really meant to say no, meaning I'm transgender? And how many people meant to say, no, I don't understand the question, or no, I'm not transgender? Um, and we think quite a lot of them. There are a lot of clues that show um, that people got the question wrong. For example, the, high, the areas with the highest rates of transgender people were uh, boroughs like Newham, Brent, uh, Tower Hamlets, places with lots of people, lots more people uh, speak English as a second language. Um, and these, there were very high, high rates of apparently transgender people in these boroughs. And so the question is, are there lots of are there really lots of transgender people in these boroughs or is it that a lot of people didn't understand the question because the ONS asked it in a way that doesn't make sense? I mean, even if you, even if English is your first language, it's a really hard question to understand. And, Maya, an astonishing finding that came out of this report is that people whose first language was not English were four times more likely to say they were trans. And what happened... I mean, I know Barnett, I know Brent, I know Brighton. Apparently, there are more trans people in Brent than Brighton. Clearly, that's not the case, is it? That, I mean, that seems like common sense to you and me and to the academics who looked at it, but the ONS is sticking to their guns. And um, they, after the census, they do some checking. They, have, they do some telephone calls where they ring a much smaller number of people to check whether they answered the questions correctly to see if they're accurate. And they found that a lot of the people who, on paper, said they were trans, um, when they rang them up, said, you know, said, no, that wasn't how I meant to answer, ask, answer the question. Um, and and they, they've disregarded that. They've said, oh, well, maybe those people were living in a household where they didn't want to, um, the other people who live with them to overhear that they're trans, which is, which is just bizarre. You know, if you, if you live with your family, they're going to know whether they're the kind of thing that you keep secret within a family. And, Mayor, this matters, doesn't it? Because if we have um, a gross over-representation of a social group that's being used quite often to shoehorn in policy change in terms of education and health provision, if the numbers are entirely inaccurate, then it blows a whole... It blows the bottom out of the case for being so obsessed with trans ideology, does it? Absolutely. And it... it um undermines our whole understanding of, of what's going on. You know, if you think that one in 200 people are trans, then when children turn up in school in the numbers that they are, saying that they have gender dysphoria and they, they identify as the opposite sex, that will be seen as being, oh, well, you know, one in 200 people are trans, so let's transition these children, rather than this is something that we've never seen before, uh, what's going on here, what's going on with the, the mental health of these children. Um, and similarly, if you think that one in 200 people are trans and then they don't turn up 
in your employment, in your healthcare, um, in your universities and so on. Stonewall and, and other organizations will say, oh, well, we need a great big program of spending to make sure that one in 200 university students are trans or one in 200 employees are trans. But if the, the original figure of one in 200 was complete nonsense, then you're just creating the opportunity for these organizations to have more influence on organizations and create more damage. And Maya, census data is meant to be about the truth. It's meant to be immutable facts. And yet, if we have such a margin of error, Maya, would you say that the 2021 census, in terms of its trans representation, isn't worth the paper it's written on? I would. I mean, the, the statistics regulator still gets the final say, and they have to look at the data and say whether this is up to scratch to be called national statistics. They don't have to decide for the whole. I mean, they could say most of the census is fine, but this question is not reliable. And they could just say this is not national statistic. Handle this with, with extreme care. You cannot use this data to make decisions on because it's because it's not reliable. Mayor Forsetter, Executive Director of Sex Matters, thank you very much for joining us on GB News today. Wow. Okay. There's lots more still to come between. Now